Hello and welcome back to the Rovers Shack YouTube channel. We're sitting down to do a bit of a lowdown on Rovers' new signing, Leopold Volstead. And who better to join us than ATX, who's obviously sat down with us before to discuss Arno Sigurdsson. We've not seen him yet, but we're excited to see him give him a really glowing review, really. Uh, so we're looking forward to finding out what Volstead will bring. ATX, thank you very much for coming back on the channel. How are we? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm just hoping that I'm not a bad omen having seen Sigurdsson get injured after I talked about him. Hopefully the same isn't going to happen to Volster because then I'm going to start getting a few of those comments. We don't want any of that rubbish. <laughs> no, we definitely don't. We, who knows with the way Rovers are going with transfers as well. You might get on for your, <laughs> for your hat trick appearance. So, Leopold Volstead, obviously another signing that we don't really know much about here. You, luckily, you cover these leagues, the Scandinavian leagues, on the Caribou and Crafter podcast. First of all, just want to tell everyone where they can find the podcast. Yeah, on Twitter at Caribou Kreft Pod. So that's Caribou K R A F T Pod. Or just search online Caribou Krefta Podcast. That's K R A F T A. So spelling for Krefta. And you'll find the website, the Twitter. You'll find everything. Like, we're not going to get confused with another Caribou and Krefta podcast. If you look it up, everything you find is going to be us. <laughs> I'll link everything down below as well as I did last time. Superb. So. Let's get into it. We'll start off with talking about the leagues now he arrives from the Norwegian League. How does it compare to English football and the Championship? Very similarly to what I said about the Allsvenskan in Sweden, I would say the Norwegian Elite Serien, there's a much greater disparity between the quality of the best team and the worst team. But not quite to the same extent as the Swedish League. Right now, although Allsvenskan is where I put more of my time in the Elite Serien, I have to admit that the Elite Serien is looking like the better division, very much reflected by the European performances of the teams. We've got four European, um, but four Norwegian teams still in European qualification, just one in Sweden. So I think that says enough about how Sweden's doing this year. <laughs> but yeah, overall, it's it's a similar standard, but you also have some giant clubs in there. You have the likes of your Molders, your Buda, Glimpse, your Rosenborgs, who are teams that are considerably above championship standard but then you also have some teams that would fit right in as we'll get to when we're talking a little bit about how Volstead's going to take the step up later on he's had no trouble playing against these big sides I'll be talking about his performances against all three of those big boys that I've mentioned and yeah it's really not a problem for him then so I can't see moving to the championship causing him any issues yeah, so what are his strengths and weaknesses you know what should we expect from him what should we maybe not ask him to do <laughs> well, I've had a little look back at the statistics over his last couple seasons. We're only halfway through the Elite Syrian this year due to it being a summer league. It doesn't run through the winter like the Premier League does. In 2023, so far this season, eight clean sheets is number one in the league. Second place has just six. So that's always nice to hear. 52 saves ranks fifth. 73% save percentage ranks fourth. And his expected goals conceded delta, so comparing the post-shot expected goals, the likelihood of a shot going in relative to how many goals he's actually conceded, he ranks fourth overall with a positive delta of 2.5, which is very, very good for the league at this point in the season. Reliable as well, conceded just tw twice from shots outside the box this season. Only three goalkeepers have conceded fewer, and he's got good numbers. It's basically, I go through the stats and I'm looking for something where I go, Right, this is something I can say for a weakness. But you look at his punching ability as well. 15 punches is fourth in the league this season. 23 for high claims is second in the league this season. 100% successful runouts. Now, not something he necessarily does frequently. I wouldn't say he's a sweeper by any means. There's some players in these statistics that you really see stand out and are like, I don't know, 19 out of 22 for runouts in the league so far this season. He's only attempted five, but when called upon to do so, he is succeeding. So it's nice to know that he has that in his locker, even if he's not going to look to bring it out so frequently. Looking at his passing as well, he tops goalkeepers for passes in the league this season. Accuracy is ranked sixth. Not quite as assuring to see someone with so many passes not have that good accuracy, but it shows that he's something very capable of. He can knock the ball around the back with good reliability. And that's all you're going to really need for your keeper when he's playing the ball in his own half. Long balls and punting downfield is about middle of the table for accuracy and for number of accurate long balls as well. That applies to last season, where he also had very good passing statistics. 
some very similar statistics where he ranked well as well. His clean sheets, his, sh- um, his save percentages, his number of saves, punches and high claims are all top five statistics from the 2022 Elite Serian. So all in all, he's got a very dynamic, very broad skill set. Maybe you don't want him being a sweeper. Maybe you don't want him playing long balls all the time because he's very much more accurate at this little short passing game. He's also got a great penalty record. He saved three of the last 10 he's faced, which is superb for a goalkeeper. So, yeah, I mean, there's very little bad I have to say about him. Yeah, and you've done a comparison to other goalkeepers as well, if you we might see in the championship. Yes, I've had a look at a small sample of players looking at statistics that I think will compare well across the two divisions. So there's these statistics I don't think are going to be too impacted by the division that they're playing in, nor the club and its relative level to the rest of the teams it's playing against. So I gathered a sample which includes, just for reference, Volstead's 2023 data and his 2022 data separately. And we've got current Blackburn keeper Ainsley Pears, Piers? Yeah. Pairs. Which is it? Yeah. Pairs. Ainsley so, Pairs from last season. We've got Thomas Kaminsky's stats from last season, the year before, and the year before, all separately. And then we've got three of the goalkeepers who I deem to be some of the best in the championship last season. Coventry's Ben Wilson, who was top for clean sheets. Rotherham's Victor Johansson, who was top for saves. And I know last time I came on and I talked about a Burnley player and you told me off, but I'm going to do it again. And it's going to go well, though. Just just wait, because there are some encouraging things that emerge from this. There, Ariane Muric, I believe I may have butchered that. Ariane Muric of Burnley, he's in the sample as well. So I've compared Volster across these range of statistics to that sample of players. Save percentage. Volster from his 2023 seasons ranks third among this sample just behind Murich and Johansson, but the best managed by a Rovers keeper in the last three years in terms of save percentage was Kaminsky, 71% in 21-22. So relative to the keepers that you've had over the last three, four years, false that so far this season, the elite Syrian has got a better save percentage than all of them when looking by season. His punches for the season, if you look at per 90, both his 2023 numbers and his 2022 numbers are top of the sample. So they are one and two in the sample of players. So very commanding aerial goalkeeper. When those crosses are coming in, you can be confident that when he's going for that ball, he's either punching it or he's claiming it, which brings me on nicely to his high claims. If we look at the high claims as well, 1.35 high claims per 90 in 2023, again, puts Volstead at the top of the sample. Something that the Rovers keepers have struggled with as of recent. So when I looked at this sample, the bottom four in the sample are all the Rovers inclusions. So it's going to be a big difference in his ability to gather the ball in the air. His high claims are fantastic. So hopefully you guys can be more confident this season when seeing crosses fly in. I know I've seen a few keepers at Reading in my time, wherever the ball goes near the goal, I'm biting my lip. I'm scratching at my, just everything. (laughs) I'm just scratching. I'm just stressed. (laughs) Uh, Looking at his passing numbers as well. Passes per 90 was top three. Uh, Kaminsky jumps just above him if you're looking at percentages but I mean marginal, marginal numbers very similar to Kaminsky in that aspect Long Balls is only topped by Johansson of Rotherham last season Volstead's clear of the former Rovers goalkeepers again I'm already referring to Ainsley Pears as former because I don't see him causing Volstead any problems at all (laughs) Um, and yeah I mean Volstead is leading a lot of things in this sample. I sent you over the the spreadsheet that I had and I'd had them color sorted and color coded. And you look across Volstead's column for relative comparison and it's just green, 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 green all the way along. So I do think he is very capable of stepping up to the championship. Uh, And overall, I'd have to say, expect consistency shown from his save percentages, expect aerial command shown by his high punches and his claims and expect his short-range distribution to be one of his strengths on the ball. You want to see him knocking the ball around that defence a little bit, and you can see him do that with relative confidence this season. Don't have to be panicking too much when you see him making those short little passes. He is good with the ball at his feet. I think that's been the big worry between Rovers fans of when we've been trying to play it out about the keeper's probably been, you know, the worry of doing that. Definitely positive. She mentioned about making the step up. What do you think his ceiling is? Do you think he could go on and out, go Rovers and go and play, you know, in the top flight of England? 
I mean, he, judging it based on what he's done so far is very difficult. He's only had one full season of top flight football under his belt in the Elite Series. He came into the side midway through 2021, uh, played full or every minute of 2022, and has now played half the season in 2023. So he's had two years, one full season. In that time, he's made that place his own. He's become what I would say is one of the best keepers in the division. But I think he's going to have to adjust to a new environment. But yeah. then I see no reason why he can't continue to push forward from there. I think it's more of a matter of where he's going to be taken by you guys as a club rather than where he's going to be moving. I'm not sure a Premier League club is necessarily going to be going, we need him. But I don't think that's to say that he couldn't perform in the Premier League. If you guys are going up, I wouldn't be going, we need a new keeper equally. No. So I think it's a matter of him getting that opportunity to show it before we make any judgments of whether he could be a Premier League quality goalkeeper. And he's still young as well. He's still got room to grow. Yeah, that's it. He's got six years. I think it is on Kaminsky, so definitely time to go. It's, it's, yeah. Thank you very much for joining us. Real good insight there into Volstead. Play. I think the main thing we needed to clarify was can he play with his feet? And it clearly shows that you know he's done it in the past. Hopefully he can do it here. Thank you for joining us. I'll link everything down below so you can check out Etzai and the Caribou and Crafter podcast. And just thank you for coming on, uh, I Sorry, really appreciate you being on. <laughs> Absolutely. And good luck for the foreseeable future. I've been watching your games closely this year with no championship football myself. So I'm rooting for you guys. Yeah, good luck to Reading for the season as well. Good win over Millwall, <laughs> at least crossed. the other day. That's uh, something. <laughs> at least it's something, yeah. No, thank you for coming on. I'll link everything thank down below for the text I and these podcasts. And thank you to everyone for watching. Hit like, hit subscribe, do all that stuff, and we'll see you soon.